Welcome back to LSH. This is my sister Natalia. She's going to lead us off on the topic of today. Go ahead. So, I wanted to talk about Drake's legacy because he's been really current for over a decade. So, I feel like talking about why he's so current and why he's one of the best, at least in my opinion. And yeah. That's what I want to talk about. This is all Natalia's opinion. So if you guys ever feel... You're not going to talk, talk about your opinion either? Oh, no, we are. Oh. But if you feel threatened, it's all based off of her opinion, not mine. It's all a joke. Anyways. So, yes, uh, Drake has been doing his thing since 2009. Um, and I just want to say simply, and I think Natalia can co-sign this... He is the most consistent artist. I can't even call him a rapper. Like he isn't a musical artist that has been the most consistent since 2009. Like to give you all perspective, in 2009, I was I was 13 years old. I'm 26 and Drake is still just as relevant as when he put out that single over in 2010 before Thank Me Later. So I need y'all to understand the impact of this man's legacy. Natalia will keep going. So I don't remember exactly the first time I heard Drake, but I know I've definitely heard him throughout my life. And I know like one of my first favorite songs from him was Worst Behavior, I remember that. Nothing was the same. And I feel like once More Life came out, that album, that's when I really started like obsessing over him in like, 2017 and like really claiming him as one of my favorite artists. And I feel every single project he drops, even though it's very controversial, at the end of the day, it's still putting the numbers up. It's still relevant. Like you can't go wrong when you talk about Drake or anything with his music. Like everything's good. Even if there's like one or two, like, OK, whatever songs like. The majority of it is still good no matter what anybody says. This is LSH. Go ahead. Yeah, I feel like based, I, f I forgot what I was gonna originally say, but you were, when you were talking about when he puts out like different projects, I reminded me of when people say, oh, I miss old Drake, this and that. But it's like, correct me if I'm wrong. But there's a lot of artists out there who do the same thing over and over again that, you know, make them blow up. Like, for example, the baby, you know, he does that same flow. But like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people are like, oh, he does the same thing, the same beats, yada, yada, yada. But I feel like if Drake, you know, you guys say, oh, I miss the old Drake. If Drake was doing the same thing that like he was doing from back then, you guys would get tired of it. So I feel like, you know, him switching up, going back to 2009, switching it up, doing something from 2020 this year. I feel like that's a lot better than just doing the same old boring thing. Like we would get tired of that really quick, whether you guys want to believe it or not. Drake, his legacy and how he's impacted everybody. I mean, like the fact that I've that I was impacted by him in 2009, maybe you were impacted in like 2013, 2014. It doesn't matter because the longevity that he has, the consistency that he has, that we can talk about any age group, any age range, and it's still the same impact. No, art, no other artist can do that. That needs to be understood. So I want to go and like back up what you said further about you know his legacy and how great he is, because many other great artists, including J. Cole, Kanye West, whoever, you consider great also say that Drake is one of the greatest you know rappers to ever do it and whenever I hear you know random people shitting on Drake it's like very I don't know what to say it's just very like off-putting because it's like your favorite artist is saying that Drake is one of the best so you just like it doesn't make any sense to me and it like gets me annoyed sometimes because I'm like you can obviously you cannot like Drake that's you but when you like just say just crazy stuff like he's trash he's this he's that it's just like you're just upset like you're just hating at that point i don't mind people not liking drake but when you go out and are disrespectful about it and just completely 
overlooking all the you know the achievements he's had the accolades everything you know like 2018 was one of drake's best years as like that i know of debatable and so i just know that you know i don't even try to listen to that because it's just bs that's all i have to say i mean the reason why i say it's debatable at the same time even though like i like a few tracks from scorpion it was a it was a side a side b type of thing and like I don't know. Like I was there for that moment. Trust and believe. I was there at the moment that Drake dropped Scorpion. It's not one of my top hits. It's not one of my favorites. In fact, I have an actual CD of it, but like I don't go back to it often. Um, I see myself going back to 2015, What Time to Be Alive, or 2017, More Life. Or even sometimes 2016 when you're in your feelings, views. I mean, I, I think views is one of those things that was polarizing. Like, 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 like half half of people liked it, other people hated it, and it was just like, if you were going through the flows and the motions of a typical light skin, it would have been just fine. Views easily. And what I mean by that is, views was a very like, if you're going through like a breakup, you're going through like some heartbreak type shit, and like you need some music to like help you calm down that's what views was for but like if you're happy and you have the best relationship of all time maybe views was like boring to you you know people said that like it was kind of boring like I, he just sounded sad the whole time talking about this and that and it's just like but the vibes need to be there y'all need to understand that like Every light skin's dream is to be related to, to Drake. It's like, like I, I personally think that Drake and I are the same, but just in alternate timelines type of thing, just to be funny. But at the same time, it's like 2015, 2016, those are very tough years in my life. And I felt like his, his music was able to help me guide through all of that. And no other artist that I can say from the beginning to now has done that for myself. We're not discrediting any legacy artists from back in the day. Not discrediting, not discrediting them by any means. But at the same time, from what we know, from what I know as a millennial, from what she knows as a Gen Z, Drake has been one of the most consistent artists of all time. I don't care what you say about Pusha T. I don't care what you say about any other artist that has tried to, had to, had tried to cross Drake. He can't be phased light work type thing i just have a question just um curious what is your favorite drake album hmm um i would say the one that i go back to frequently i mean not even counting this year i can't i mean i respect honestly never mind and i definitely love her loss but um i would say the one, and I think this one is also divided too. From 2015, if you're reading this, is too late. I think there was just so many tracks in that mixtape that he labeled it as. That mixtape that was just so fire. I mean, we're talking about Legend, Energy, Jungle, Company. Like, there's just so many, there's just so many tracks on there that like, he was just spitting so much. And like, I don't think he even realized himself, or maybe he even did. That it's a classic already. Easily. I mean, yes, everybody loves Take Care. They say it's the greatest thing of all time. They love Nothing Was the Same. And, you know, So Far Gone from 2009. But, like, you know, I, I just feel like people at the same time, yes, Take Care was one of his greatest albums of all time. Yes, that's fine. But we have to move on. We have to move on. We can't just keep holding on to Take Care. Look at every single thing else that he's delivered to us. There's, there, you can't tell me that Take Care is, and nothing was the same, was one of the only last things that he's done. Everything else is just filler. You can't tell me that. You can't. I know what filler is. Anime. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I have to agree. Well, so you were saying that nothing was, or not nothing was the same. If you're reading This Is Too Late, is your favorite album? Yeah. Um, it really is. I, I just, I feel like he was with, he was in one of his his bags like where he was just like you know what i'm in a hotel room right now and you know i just feel like making a whole album but i'll call it a mixtape and let me just see how it goes and he just 
killed like the entire thing. I just it's it's just it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I have to say, although I do like that album as well, um, nothing was the same. Has to be probably my favorite. Obviously, I'm not gonna say that's you know like that was the last album he did that was good because that's obviously you know not true. But I just feel like I can go back to the album, listen to it for the most part, no skips, and I just I don't know. It's just a lot of songs that I remember listening to for the first time and just like brings back, I guess, nostalgia, I guess that's the word. Mm -hmm. And so that definitely has to be one of my favorite albums. And even though I say that's my favorite album, I still have so many songs, even from her loss that I feel like are so like legendary, like they're gonna be here years and years to come. Like each album he drops whether you like it or not there's at least one song that's gonna be here for years and years to come easily i mean i don't even can i list them all we're talking rich flex track one 21 can you do something for me like and then you got major distribution which is one of the top ones because he starts it off slow but then he gets you because he, he puts it fast again then you got on bs which is like another trap flow you got Backstreet. No, sorry, no. Um, back, back, back outside. Boys. Thank you. Sorry, my bad. Backstreet. Back outside, boys. Easily, Gunna and 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 Young Thug could have flowed on that, but like he still killed it on his own. I mean, you got Circo Loco. You got Broke Boys. You got. Um, what was it? Middle of Middle of the Ocean. Middle of the Ocean. And I already said. I guess it's fuck me at the very end track. Like that. That's. That's one of the ones where I'm just like, Drake literally, he didn't even have to even give that to us. He could have ended it with 3 a.m. at Glenwood with 21 Savage, and you know what? He could have gotten away with it. The fact that he ended it the way that he did with her loss, I guess it's fuck me, was just literally take care of vibes 2011 and 2022. Like, he can, it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how he can be so consistent all these years that have passed with everything that has gone on with all of the the rhetoric and, and, and the presidencies and, and the social things that we've all dealt with he's still prevalent to this day i mean please don't forget dark lane demo tapes not you two featuring chris brown my favorite track from the whole mixtape that he put out in 2020 may 1st 2020 prime time covid is what i call it prime time covid where everybody was in lockdown or you're working from home or whatever you were doing that was prime time covid and homie said i'm gonna drop just for fun and then drop hot tracks not just trash hot tracks come on now yeah i feel like every or at least the majority of that song the majority of the songs on that album were really good like obviously not you too is definitely one of the best on that album but there's just like so many and it's like this is a mixtape it's not even an album mm -mm. and yeah, yeah. he's just dropping songs that it's like i don't even know how to explain like it. his throwaways are hits it makes it, I, I i need people to understand that the throwaways that he has are hits where other people that have throwaways they're throwaways i i could i listened to it once i already forgot about it but drake's throwaways different league different definitely i feel like and then this is just going back to the her La her loss album um i know a lot of people did say that this was like more of a drake album than a you know collab yeah they were like oh 21 is like more of like a feature the entire time but if he either way it was still a good album with both of them without 20 but whatever it was still good but one of the comments i've seen a couple times is when people were like oh um 21 carried the album or um you know like this should have been more 21 and not drake and i'm like you're you're doing the most at that point like you're just like full blown just trying to just hate for no reason like drake is not worried about you he's making his money he's still doing what he has to do no matter what you guys say hating on him whatever like it's just i don't know how to explain it and i'm not trying to get mad but that's just when i see it 
it's like you're just really like you have no life at that point like just trying to say that stuff it makes no sense at all no nah, i mean it's facts i mean and you know i'm gonna wrap it up with this i would say that it needs to be understood and it needs to be said that like we're not just i'm gonna say like we're not dick riding drake we're not especially not me but at the same time it's like it like the the, the respect needs to be placed it needs to be said it needs to be addressed okay because no other artist not no Trey songs not no jamie fox not no kanye west no other artist from 2009 is still as relevant as he is today as drake and even then kanye west don't get me wrong he's relevant now but not for what you want him to be relevant for exactly not for what you want for him to be relevant for this man's doing the most trying to be freaking president trump's vice president like like we don't got time for none of that all right he's doing his own little weirdo thing drake is in his bag what, what what did he say in um in um in Circo Loco? He did it for the mob ties. He did it. He did that Jay shit for Jay Prince. Prince. He did it for the mob ties. And if it was up to him, he would do it one more time. <laughs> like like he's not apologizing, you know. Like he just did that to like you know what? Fine, I'll raise some money for you know the, the, for the people, whatever. But like. He ain't messing with Kanye. He's not trying to be like, hey, yo, Kanye, help me with this track. I need you to be a feature. We don't got time for that, bro. And that's a whole nother video. But just know Drake is goaded and needs to be said, needs to be addressed, needs to be spoken. And that's what this video is for, LSH. Um, thank you all for tuning in. This is Natalia. This is myself. 